the new CBN cashless policy, taking a critical look at their effects. In the last few weeks, the Central Bank of Nigeria has thrown out two new physical policies that will have telling effects on the nation and its populace. One is to redesign three major dominations of the Naira notes, namely 200, 500, and 1,000 Naira notes, respectively. While the recent one is to foster cashless policy by introducing limits on cash received over the counter, ATM points, and POS terminals. Why it is the prerogative of the governing body to formulate policies and chart a better physical path for the country to follow for its economic stability and prosperity. It is expected that such policy must not be draconian and such should have a human face. In the support of the NERA redesigning, the central bank governor and other senior officers of the Apex Bank gave disturbing figures of the money in circulation to be 3.2 trillion Naira, out of which 2.7 trillion Naira, which accounts for more than 80%, is outside the bank votes. This is unacceptable and has necessitated the move to redesign and request that old notes of the affected dominations be returned back to the bank votes. And ensuring that the currency don't get withdrawn outside the banking system again, the CBN then introduced the new policy on cash limits. Why it is also understood, it has to be noted that the major parameters upon which this new cash limit policy will stand have not been carefully catered for. By the words of the CBN governor, the cashless policy has been in place since 2011 or thereabouts, and with the figures of electronic transactions available for last year, amounted to 6.1 trillion naira, which has already surpassed this year, Nigeria is ready to go cashless. However, what he has failed to understand is that the drivers, which are mobile money and bank agents, of this very figure he probably gave who are in the excesses of over 1.4 million, we are not catered for in the policy as it is presently formulated. The policy recognized individual and corporate accounts and clearly stated how much cash will be available to them daily and weekly respectively, but failed to provide for the limit for POS agents. The policy hasn't taken note of over 1.4 million Nigerians who survive as retail mini banks, which we can also call them as an agent, who are edging the gap where it is closely, it is costly rather for banks to survive through the use of POS. It also has not addressed the use of POS as a means to receive payments for goods and services at stores and the likes due to the current POS withdrawal limit of 20,000 Naira daily. In the same vein, the policy needs to be reviewed to accommodate POS agents on how they will be able to get cash for their daily operations and also possible review of limits to gradually process cashless policy adoption working with the current reality. Hence, the policy will be pushing over 1.4 million Nigerians into the unemployment market again. Also, issue resolution should also be given a top priority while bank staff should rise to their expected responsibility. Cashless policy are good for economic growth. Victor, what do you think? In the last how many years now, can we really begin to implement it like ASAP? What, what are the things we need to put in place, right, um, to really, really drive this cashless policy? I don't think like the current CBN governor has done like a very fantastic work to be able to drive that. I'm not saying that these things are easy, right? You know, when they say it's easier said than done, but there has to be cashless policy is not something that is new. 
is not something that nobody has ever done before. It's not something that no economy right, has done. And when you think about that and everything, you, you want to look at it from the angle of who are the people right, um, that have engineered this cashless policy and how essentially have they done it. I mean, success is just basically, let's copy. So what is working for other economies? Let's copy it. Let's do it. So Hussein, I, I pretty much think that it's something we've overflogged. Can we just get started on it already? Do we take away all of the... Because behind implementing any policy, there's always, you know, self-centeredness and, you know, who is it going to affect? What's in it for me? How is it going to affect my own interests? Right, and everybody is just seeking out for their own interest. And whereas the biggest interest we should be looking out for is the interest of the people who are serving. So that brings me back to once we don't understand that this is a service to the nation, to the people, then we know what to do to really drive cashless economy or cashless policy, right? But are we doing it? So this is like okay. an open message to the CBN okay. governor and to those that work out from there, can we begin to do what we know to do and put the interest of the highest office, which is the office of the citizens? Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Doctor. I will, before I comment, right, I want uh, Leia to say one or two things on these thoughts so I can okay. say... Yeah. Thank you very much, Hussein. Um, you know, this cashless policy thing, you know, I need your area of interest, per se. Uh, just like what Victor said, it should be whatever we do, we should try to have the, I mean, our leaders should have the, the mindset of um, making things life easy for citizens. It's a good thing. It's a welcome development. This is what has been done in advance work to track data, spending, economic processes. Now, if you, if you check what happens recently, I think as out of yesterday or this week, um, is a senior, some senior government officials in Europe have, have, have been arrested over alleged corruption charges. They found over 1.2 million euro starched in a, in a suitcase in their mm -hmm. office in Europe. Yeah, 1.2 million euros. Where in Nigeria, you know, I don't want to say something negative, but you know that money is small compared to what people hold mm -hmm. illegally. Now, uh, it's a good thing. In, in the 90s, where late ni in the 90s, where you have... Uh, banks not really electronically operated, those manual banking. People prefer to carry Ghana must go from Onitsha to Lagos, from Lagos to Kano to come and buy goods. And what happens on the way? There's always constant robbery, you hear of those robbery. But now since the advent of internet technology and using seamless transaction, robbery has drastically reduced. Yeah, it happens, but once in a while, people don't carry huge funds around. You can just come to Lagos and do whatever you want to do, buy your goods and go. So if the government can pursue this cashless policy very well, I think it's going to have a way of reducing corruption, people holding cash, government officials having access to excess cash for their selfish gain, money made for projects, or people involved in illegal uh, or criminalities like robbery, kidnapping. Kidnappers don't demand money to their bank account. They'll ask you to bring 100 million naira cash to come and give them right. When they know that you cannot get access to 100 million, I think kidnapping will stop. But why we see the positives of it, they are drivers, just like you said, POS and all those things for the unbanked people. The truth of the matter is, if you go to rural environments, I don't think the cash volume, even though there are many, but the cash volume individuals transact in a week might not be up to that amount, threshold, 20,000 naira. But they still need this POS to make work easy for them, for the unbanked people. Uh, other okay. financial agents. So that's where when the government also regulate, they can regulate that, also monitor them. And also, the, the other issue of uh, making the, the uh, processes seamless, the technology involved, how savvy or how, how, or no, how, how seamless can bank transactions take place? Who is going to take a like, uh, cost if a bank error happens in transacting? It's going to reflect, sometimes it takes up to seven days for money to reflect back to your account. Can they make the process shorter? And also, can the CBN reduce transaction costs? These are the things we are talking about. So that okay, is. thank you so much, Elijah and uh, Victor. So, um, I, I want to kind of uh, take a little bit back because Victor's concern has been how is these uh, policies going to be 
uh, very easy and accommodating to the populace, right? So this CBN policy, just like I, I just summarized there, has been in place since 20, there, there has been a test on 2011, then 2012, there was a, 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 some bodies that were licensed to, to carry out these transactions, right? Now, it, is started, it started from wallet system. It was late 2017 where POS came into play, you know, to faster because you have to, you need to have a tool to ensure that everything works hand in hand and to for also foster interoperability between banks and the bank led solutions and uh, fintech led solutions, right? Well, I, I, again, just like uh, Elijah highlighted, saying this policy will help us to be more accountable, like the politicians hoarding of money will be reduced, right? And also, it also helps us to safeguard increased security because all those uh, kidnappers and what have you, they don't have, they, they won't be able to demand electronic because it's traceable. That's what the system does. So it is a new development. However, you see, the reality is just the way as expressed by Victor, where people are reluctant to accept change and it has to be forced. This policy has been on, on board for more than uh, 10 years now, but we the government has started. I think it is now left for the populace to start uh, playing their own role. What we are saying from our own end is, this has created jobs. This policy, this uh, CBN cashless policy has actually created jobs, bringing people to be uh, self-employed and generate resources as they provide services and give a little bit charge. Now, these uh, categories of people have not been catered for in the new policy. They need to tell them that beyond the categorization of individual and corporate body, they need to be able to say, these agents, they are like a mini bank. What do you have for them to have access to cash? That's number one. Number two is the limit. Just like I said earlier, if you look at the limit, if you say the limit for POS withdrawal is 20,000, I give you an example. I go to a, a, a supermarket store. I buy a bag of rice. How much is bag of rice today? Approximately maybe uh, 40, 35,000 naira, approximately. Now, that means I cannot pay with the POS, the ATM card I have, because the limit I am allowed to do for a day is 20,000. Even if I'm not exchanging for cash, I'm exchanging my use of POS, uh, my use of ATM card on a POS for goods and services. I can't do that. So that in, the, in, the, in that case, we need to request for a limit to accommodate our, if I go to a market, I should be able to buy food stuffs at home and pay with my card seamlessly without limits, if I don't want to use transfers. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, it was very nice listening from you. I'm sure we're going to continue uh, seeing this later. So Victor Yukiri is next after the break. Do stay with us. Thank you.